What's going on, AWG fam? Welcome back to the channel. So I know it's been a few weeks since I've been keeping up on posting. Uh, as you can tell, my voice is fucking shot after DC. Uh, it was a great fucking time. I had a blast in DC. And this is actually what I'm going to be doing for this video. Is um, I'm just going to give my experience on DC and how all that went. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it was a great experience. I did lots of yelling, lots of fuck Antifas. Um, so make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, come back and check out more of my content. Um, also gonna kinda put it out there now, so, when I go to post some of my video footage, you guys are gonna be able, you guys are gonna be able to tell. It's not gonna be hard for you guys to tell, uh. I am in the Proud Boys. I've been in the Proud Boys for a while now. Some of you probably picked up on it. Um, but I, I've been in the Proud Boys for a minute now. Um, look, they're the only guys that are out there right now that are willing to take the fight to Antifa and BLM. Now, it doesn't mean that our we as an organization cannot make mistakes. And there were definitely mistakes made this weekend. There were definitely mistakes made this weekend. And those mistakes definitely need to be addressed. And as an organization, we need to step up our game. And that's something that I do believe wholeheartedly. Um, there needs to be more training put in. We need to teach composure. Uh, a lot of guys, that's something that I see is lacking, is composure. Um, really, I'm going to really, let, let me start at the beginning. So, uh, DC, we get there, unload our shit, immediately we're being uh, watched by Antifa. Immediately when we pulled up and started getting out, Antifa's over. Right across the way, recording that we we had that we had we were obviously unloading the bus, so um get all get all checked in, get our stuff away. Um, we ended up going going out and hitting the streets uh, later that night, just doing the basically just walking around, showing that we're we're in town. Um. Got to see Roger Stone while I was out there. That was really cool. Uh, I got a couple pictures. Um, I, I wanted to get more video, but I'm sorry with everything going on and the seriousness of being out there and having to deal with Antifa and their antics and just keeping the head, my head on a swivel. It just... I, if I'm gonna do video, it's gotta be on like a GoPro or something like that. It can't be through my phone. Um, it's just, it's not gonna work. It's gotta be something that has a constant recorder on it because I can't go and be like, oh, the good shit's happening now. Let me start recording. It, it, it's just not possible. So, um, definitely wish I had gotten more. I got some, um. When things were, were kind of starting off uh, Saturday morning, um, we, I think we got there about 10, 10.30ish, maybe before then, I, I can't remember for sure, because that whole day, I was, it was a long motherfucking day. Um, I want to say I was in kit. Which I wore full kit the whole time. I was in kit probably 12 to 14 hours that day, I think, is about what we were in kit for. So, it was a rough day. I mean, I'm, I, got, I got the bruises to show it. So, and trust me, the blisters on my feet to show the 15 miles that we put in that day, too. Uh, Saturday, we probably put in about 15 miles walking around D.C. Um... Saturday night, I'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, Saturday night was a fucking clusterfuck. 
but Saturday during the day, hands down, probably one of the best experiences that I have ever had in, in my life. Um, just the people that were out there, the love and the support. It, it was I. I personally have never felt that kind of love, and I've never felt that kind of support, and it was the most surreal feeling. Like it was, it, it was like being, it was like coming back from Afghanistan, and when I walked through Atlanta Airport, everybody was clapping. Like that's what it felt like. It was, I've never felt anything like that, and I had so many people come up and say, you know, thank you for what you're doing, you know. We need more guys like you. We need more people like you. And I, I agree, you know. I, we need more people who are willing to go out and defend others. We need more people who are willing to do that. And here's the thing. Saturday night, there were so many escort missions where people got escorted back to their hotels by the Proud Boys. But that's not being talked about. People's safety was taken extremely fucking seriously that night. We were making sure that people were not getting the shit beat out of them. Because of a fucking shirt. Or a hat. Or a flag. And here's the thing. We ain't gonna fucking back down either. And I ain't one to back down. And I done told y'all that many times. That's why I said I joined an organization that's willing to stand in front of these motherfuckers. And say we ain't gonna fucking take the bullshit. You can kiss my ass. And that's how I feel about it. Look, y'all can hate me as much as you want, and y'all can talk as much shit as you want. I don't fucking care. I joined the organization because it's time for us to stand up and fucking do something. I'm not a fucking three percenter, and I ain't fucking waiting anymore. I'm done. I'm done with the waiting. Hell, I even had an E9 star major come up to me. I'm tired, obviously. But tell me, I, you're doing the right thing, son. Thank you. And I'm glad to see it. The Airborne is out here representing. That right there says enough for me. That tells me that I am doing the right thing. And they all want, I don't fucking care what anybody else says. I have plenty of military officers and high-ranking enlisted come up and say, you're doing the right thing. If you have any doubts about what you're doing, you're doing the right thing. You're standing up for the American people. And that's why I'm out there. That's why... I joined this organization because they're doing the right fucking thing. Now, like I said, Saturday night, there were some things that needed to be addressed about Saturday night, and I'll be coming here in a minute. But um, something else that that was it, it was so incredible was the amount of foreign people, the people who had immigrated here, that were down there. At that rally, speaking out about socialism and communism because they escaped it. That shit, I'm not gonna lie, I teared up at points listening to some of their stories about how they came here for a better life because they didn't have a shot of a better life in their country because of communism. And I'm talking. People from Mexico talking about the oppression of Mexico. Talking people from South America talking about the oppression in South America. China. China with people from China were huge there. And the CCP. That was all over the place. That and their stories are fucking incredible. People from Vietnam. I'm telling you. If you don't think that communism or socialism is a bad thing, you're out of your goddamn mind. Go talk to those people like I talk to them. Listen to their stories. It, it, they are the American dream. And I thank them. Because at least they're the ones who keep it alive. I've said many times, and I still will continue to say it. You don't like this country, get the fuck out. And make room for people like them. Who are trying to escape communism and socialism. You want that shit? Then go to a country with it. You want your free health care? Then move to fucking move, move to Europe or where fucking Britain. Go go move over there. Go to Canada. You don't like it here? Then get the fuck out. 
You want free health care? Go to somewhere where you're taxed 50 fucking percent of your goddamn income. So that you can have that free health care that is so fucking free. There's no such thing as goddamn free. I'm sick of hearing that shit from people. That needs to stop. There's no such thing as free. You're going to be taxed for it. It has to be paid for somehow. Nothing in this world is free. Nothing. That's why I like to work for a living. Because at least I feel like I accomplished something at the end of the fucking day. Now let's get into Saturday night. So Saturday night started off okay. Um, we're down by Harry's. And if y'all don't know what Harry's is, Harry's is the... Uh, Basically, the, the conservative bar in uh, D.C., all the conservatives go there and hang out because they're friendly to conservatives and Trump supporters. And Diva likes to try and burn their shit down all the time. Which, at this point, they have a, basically a pretty constant, constant presence of police over at Harry's. But... When we went out to Harry's, man, there were so many Proud Boys out there. Holy shit. I, I want to say Saturday, there were probably over a thousand Proud Boys out there. Easily over a thousand Proud Boys out there. Um, and that's kind of why I Saturday night, I, I it was such, there was just so much going on. It, it was insane. It really was. Now, something I do want to address on behalf of the organization of the Proud Boys. Look, we got to get to a point where we ain't stomping motherfuckers out once they're down. We're going to kill somebody. Point blank, period. That shit can't happen anymore. We're supposed to be better than Antifa and BLM. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be better than that. Stomp the motherfuckers out after we're already down on the ground. You're going to fucking kill somebody and now people are going to prison. That's not what we're trying to accomplish here. I don't want to see my brothers in this organization go to prison because you did something fucking stupid. That's newbie shit. And we ain't got no place for that in the organization. You don't want to listen to what people are telling you and do. You're saying, fuck that, fuck the leadership, then get the fuck out. You don't need to be a part of the organization if you're not going to fucking listen to what your leadership is telling you to do. You can't do that shit. Your leadership is telling you something. You better fucking listen. And the problem with this is you guys are not trained military. There's a lot of guys in there that aren't. I am. I understand what orders mean. And when you don't follow orders, you end up locked up. Or you end up with four people stabbed. Which, I don't know how avoidable that was. And I will say, from, from my point of view, I don't know if that was avoidable. Honestly, I think that guy was there to get one of the top leadership. I'm almost 100% sure that he was placed there to try to get some of our top leadership. Now, I will say as the dude's leaving, you cannot fucking hit him in the back of the head with a fucking helmet, man. Are you guys goddamn serious? Are the bitch sitting there grabbing his fucking face mask? Are you serious? We can't do that shit. And here's the thing. It's like people people want to talk all that shit. Like people said the dude got sucker punched. But here's the thing. When that woman grabbed his mask, everybody else around her knew he had a knife. Apparently she had no fucking clue. But that's why people started hitting him. Because he had a fucking knife. And people were scared he was about to start swinging that knife around. Which, inevitably, that's what happened. And 
We almost lost one of our top leadership. He's in the hospital right now. He was one of the people who was stabbed, and he had internal bleeding, and they couldn't find it. So, and here's the thing. Antifa knows who he is, and Antifa did put a hit out on him. So, you come to your own conclusions, but I've got a pretty good idea as to what happened. I'm not a fucking idiot, and most people aren't. So, now I've addressed that. There was something else that happened. So I watched the video of the guy and the, the chick. They said this couple got attacked. Well, I don't know. Uh, here's the thing. They, they don't show the full context of it. I see most of the context of that video. There wasn't just them and it wasn't just a couple. They were all wearing black masks. They were all running around doing hoodlum ass shit. They weren't the only ones that were attacked. There were four of them, five of them, running and got caught up. I know at least four of them got hit. And then you had the couple that got hit. Now there was people saying that a man grabbed that woman's hair and pulled her to the ground. No, no, no. A woman grabbed that woman's hair and pulled her to the ground. Let's get that shit straight now. That is bullshit that people are coming out saying, I can't believe a proud boy would do that. That wasn't a proud boy. That was a woman that pulled her to the ground. So, let's set the fucking record straight. I watched the video and it's really not that fucking hard to tell that that was a woman. So, for those of you that have said, and, and there are many people who have reported on it saying that, Oh, a proud boy pulled her to the ground. No, that was a woman. And, well, proud boys don't have women. So, try again. Now, something I do want to say on behalf of the police. I could not believe what I witnessed. And this is first, this is coming straight from me. I watched, I watched this happen with my eyes. I watched it happen. So, at one point, we're down at Harry's, and this is basically Antifa's, uh, this is what their tactics were most of the night, was they knew we were at Harry's, so they were just kind of sending randos in there to try and fuck with us at Harry's, just trying, honestly, they were trying to get people hurt, they were stabbing people, they were, and I guarantee you, most of those people that rolled in there did have knives. Didn't have something to try to kill somebody with. But all they were doing were basically sending in patsies. Just so they could get hemmed up. And look, I watched the I watched them catch up one kid, give him to the police. I watched the police let him go. And not fucking with you. I watched them not arrest him, but let him go. Took him up the street. And just let him walk off. How the fuck are we going to solve any goddamn problems? We gave them to you on a silver fucking platter. Just like we gave three others to you on a silver fucking platter. And I watched you let them go. What in the fuck? We are never going to make this better. If we are not making these fucking arrests, what are we doing? Y'all want them off the streets, but y'all won't make a goddamn arrest. Y'all are just letting your brothers and sisters get hurt out there at this point. And y'all ain't doing shit about it. Like, we took to the streets because we are there to clean up the streets. And it's sad because that's supposed to be the police's job. But after this weekend, I don't know why, how I feel about the police anymore. I know for sure I support the Cleveland police. For, for sure. Because they understand the severity of the situation. If they're willing to assault the fucking police, 
then why are you going to defend them? They don't even want you. They don't want you to exist. We want you to exist. But they don't want you to exist. We know we need you. But I don't need somebody who is spineless. Somebody who doesn't uphold the Constitution. That's not what I need. And that's not what the American people need. And it's sad that I'm saying that. I wish it wasn't so. But it is. I, I, I know for a fact that BLM put their hands on multiple people while we were there trying to protect people. Nobody was arrested. I mean, at what point are we going to take them seriously? At what point is this game going to end? Look, the police got fucked up that night, too. There was one point where it was police line, Antifa, and then across the intersection was a police line and a Proud Boys. We were ready. We told them, go take a cigarette break. Go get a donut. Go go take a few minutes. Let us handle this problem for you. Y'all can't handle it. Your hands are tied. Ours aren't. Because we ain't scared to do what needs to be done. And I'm not scared to do what needs to be done. I'll take to the goddamn streets. That shit don't bother me at all. It's, I, I, I said, it's like I went on a fucking deployment in my own goddamn country because of how insane things have gotten. I'm out there because I give a fuck about the people of this country. I don't want to see people get hurt. Not over a fucking political party. Who gives a fuck? A lot of the things that I've seen go down, there was a lot of preventable shit, and then there was stuff that was just purely, like, running the BLM side. I I couldn't believe that that happened. We gotta be better than that. We have to be better than them. We don't do that. It's the kind of shit we can't be a part of. Because now we're just as fucking bad. We can't do shit like that. Like I said, it comes down to fucking composure. And the leadership needs to hold people fucking accountable. If you know who was a part of that dumb shit, they best be out the fucking organization. Or have a serious fucking reprimand. And I mean, I don't know how serious you can get with it. Me personally, I understand it's not a military organization. It's not. But, you have to treat it as such. If we're talking about potential war with these people, we need to be tactical. We need to be more tactical. We need to be more efficient. What I would like to see is more training. Knowing what to do in situations because there was just a lot of clusterfuck bullshit going on. People just not knowing what's going on. Fake reports coming in and us jumping at the fake reports like we can't do that shit. We can't. If, if we're gonna make a dent at all, we cannot fall for the bullshit antics. And I feel like a lot of what was happening was them playing off of us wanting the fight so bad that we lost sight of we were out there to protect people. That's our first and foremost, make sure people are safe. 
I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just fucking crazy. But that's that's what I see. That's that's what I would like to see. But there was some. There is a good story which I'll I'll go ahead and and I'll kind of finish this off. I, I might I might dive a little more into it. Um, do something. I don't know, man. We'll see. But uh, I'm gonna finish this off with this story. So uh, we're walking down the road, and this lady is. It, it was one of those. We're losing our democracy. Kind of moments. We're walking down the road, and I wish I had got this on video. I wish I fucking had because it would have legit been one of those fucking. Those memes, man. I would have fucking made a fortune on that meme. But we're walking, and this chick, I'm on. Uh, me personally, I always took up the rear. Uh, I, I. Situational awareness. I know that if there's anybody who's going to be situationally aware of what's going on around them, it's going to be me. So I made sure to stay in the back to make sure nobody was creeping. And there weren't no sly bullshit. So, uh, we're walking, and I hear her screaming at the front. Gets to the middle, she's still screaming. It gets to me, and she's still screaming. Get out of my city! Get out! Get out! And I'm like, is this bitch serious? Get out of my city! So I look at her, and I'm like, this is my country, too. I'm allowed to be here. I don't know what to tell you. I can go wherever the fuck I want here. Shut up. And she's like, yeah! So I start going, ah! As I'm walking down the street. And she she kept going, man. We were almost a full mile away. We can still hear this bitch screaming. Like, I shit you not. We probably went four blocks and we could still hear her screaming at the top of her lungs. I was hoping and praying. She was going to do one of them, hit the gas, and nail the person in front of her fucking thing. But, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So, but, I figured I'd, I'd leave it up on a on a fun note. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought. And, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Love you, AWG fam and my XMC fam. I'm out.